we all, I won't say love or hate, but have our opinions on the FSF, the Free Software Foundation, one of the founding orgs of both free software and of Linux. Without their work in the past, Linux would not be what it is today. But nowadays, is the FSF still a useful organization? Oh boy, it has been quite a while since we've seen such a massive hot take from Drew DeVault. The free software foundation is dying. Now before you jump to any conclusions, let's just see what he has to say. Their achievements are unmistakable. We must offer them our gratitude and admiration for decades of accomplishment in establishing and advancing our cause. The principles of software freedom are more important than ever, and the products of these institutions remain necessary and useful. The GPL license family, GCC, GNU Core Utils, and so on. Nevertheless, the organizations behind this work are floundering. If we ever set up, say, a Linux or free software museum, you would obviously have an entire room set up for the FSF, set up for Stallman, and all of the work that was done under this banner. Because I think a lot of people forget, Linux, when it was first created, was not under GPL v2. When it was first made, it was under a custom license that Linus made that contained a restriction on commercial usage. Linus was a university student at the time and was not thinking about the consequences of including this. He realized that GPL v2 was going to be a far better license and then migrated over. It's by no means perfect, and the same can be said about GPL v3 and all of the other licenses out there, but it did basically everything that Linus and many other people wanted. But back to the blog post. The Free Software Foundation must concern itself with the following ahead of all else. Disseminating free software philosophy. Fair enough. Developing, publishing, and promoting copyleft licenses agree as well, and overseeing the health of the free software movement. You might argue that other things should be on this list as well, but I think we can all agree that at a bare minimum, this is what the Free Software Foundation should be doing. But Drew argues it is failing in each of these regards, and as its core missions fail, the Foundation is investing its resources into distractions. In its role as the thought leaders of the free software philosophy, the messaging of the FSF has a narrow reach. The organization's messaging is tone-deaf, ineffective, and myopic, hammering on about GNU slash Linux nomenclature. I honestly don't know why this is one of the hills that the FSF wants to die on. There was a time where GNU slash Linux was the term that people used. That was a long time ago. Over the years, language has evolved, and people realize that GNU slash Linux is a really awkward name to pronounce, so they dropped the GNU, and now it's just Linux. And this is just in the free software in the Linux world itself. If we go outside of this space to the regular people, most people only know about GNU slash Linux, if they've ever heard of it whatsoever, from memes making fun of the Free Software Foundation for having this myopic view of what the name is. For most people, it is just going to be Linux. And here's a great recent example of ineffective messaging on the FSF blog about Google's decision to drop JPEG XL, where it says down here, while we can't link to Google's issue tracker directly because of another freedom issue, its use of non-free JavaScript, we're told that the issue regarding JPEG XL's removal is the second most starred issue in the history of the Chromium project. So you don't actually know. You're not linking to the issue tracker, and you've only been told that it is. So why should anyone take what you're saying seriously if you're not going to take researching the issue seriously? And I understand being obsessed with non-free JavaScript, but there is nothing wrong with just linking the issue tracker so people can do their own research. Antagonism towards our allies in the open source movement and maligning the audience as used rather than users. I can't say I've seen this terminology being used before. I do wish he'd actually linked to a blog where it was, you know, being used. 
antagonism towards our allies in the open source movement, the best examples being why open source misses the point of free software and why free software is better than open source. But at the end of the day, even if you have your issues with open source, which is totally valid, they are both better than everything being proprietary and maligning the audience as used rather than users. I can't say I've seen this terminology being used. I do wish he'd actually linked to a blog post where it was. I tried to search for it and I couldn't actually find anything. None of this aids the cause. The pages and pages of dense philosophical essays and poorly organized FAQs do not provide a useful entry point or reference for the community. The message cannot spread like this. If you get bored, go over to the FSF's website or the GNU website and start digging around for resources on what free software is, all of the stuff behind free software, as if you're a new user that has no idea what's going on. And you're going to see that there is just walls and walls and walls of information and not some easy entry point to, you know, succinctly explain what all of this is. This article is probably the best entry point, but even so, it is just a giant wall of text that is going to be pretty unapproachable for a lot of new people, let alone the FAQs attached to the licenses. Good luck understanding that if you have no idea about free software already. Like, this is kind of ridiculous. I get that it needs to be here, but it can probably be structured in a more approachable manner. There are certainly external resources like blog posts and videos that do a good job supplementing what is available from GNU and the FSF. But the only reason these external resources need to exist is because of how lacking the resources are from the official source. As for copyleft, well, it's no coincidence that many people struggle with the FSF's approach. Do you, dear reader, know the difference between free software and copyleft? Many people assume that the MIT license is not free software because it is not viral, because it is not copyleft. This is something that I initially assumed when I was first learning about free software. I heard about the MIT license and I just assumed it was just an open source license. But the FSF clearly lists it as a free software license. They call it the expat license because they argue it could be confused with the X11 license, but this is the MIT license that everybody knows about. The GPL family of licenses are essential for our movement, but few people understand its dense and esoteric language despite the 16,000 word FAQ which supplements it. I think a big part of not understanding it is not wanting to read a 16,000 word FAQ and hip new software isn't using copyleft. Over 1 million NPM packages use a permissive license, while fewer than 20,000 use the GPL. Cargo sports a half million permissive packages and another 20,000 or so GPL'd. But this is the really interesting thing. And is the free software movement healthy? This one gets an emphatic yes, because even though people are not using copyleft licenses, they are using other free software licenses, primarily in the form of the MIT license. Back in 2015, this is what the breakdown looked like on GitHub. 44.69% on MIT, 15.68% on other, that's just various random other licenses, 12.96% on GPL v2, 11.19% on Apache, and 8.88% on GPL v3. A much newer data set in 2019 shows a fairly similar breakdown. 51% using MIT, 15% using Apache 2.0, 5% using BSD3 clause, 10% using GPL v3, and 10% using GPL v2. The blue bar you see here is the number of Go packages using it, but that's not relevant for what we're talking about today. 
thanks to the open source movement and the near equivalence between free software and open source software, especially if we're using a permissive license, there's more free software than ever and virtually all new software contains free software components, but most people call it open source. So because of this connection, most people don't use the term free software community, instead they use free and open source software community, FOSS, is now dominated by people who are beyond the reach of the FSF's message. The broader community is enjoying a growth in the diversity of backgrounds and values represented, and the message does not reach these people. The FSF fails to understand its place in the world as a whole, or its relationships to the progressive movements taking place in the ecosystem and beyond. The foundation does not reach out to new leaders in the community, leaving them to form insular, weak institutions among themselves with no central leadership, and leaving us vulnerable to exploitation from growing movements like open core and commercial attacks on the free and open source software brand. Reforms are sorely needed for the FSF to fulfill its basic mission. In particular, I call for the following changes. And this is where it gets really fun, and I know a lot of people are really going to disagree with Drew's takes, but just hear him out. Reform the leadership. It's time for Richard Stallman to go. He was already kicked out years ago and then brought back as a part of the board of directors, but he wants him completely gone. His polemic rhetoric rivals even my own. At least Drew realises he's a little bit divisive, and the demographics he represents, to the exclusion of all others, is becoming a minority within the free software movement. We need more leaders of colour, women, LGBTQ representation, and others besides. The present leadership, particularly from RMS, creates an exclusionary environment in a place where inclusion and representation are important for the success of the movement. My general thought is quality of candidate and diversity of thought is far more important than arbitrary characteristics that you can't control. Bring in people who are more willing to work with open source, more willing to work with people outside of free software, and willing to bring in new people who want to, you know, approach things in a very different way. I think the biggest problem is can you name a single person in the Free Software Foundation that isn't Stallman? I certainly can't. And I'd be surprised if anyone else can. But Drew does have an interesting take on why he has this opinion. So here's a purely unempathetic, capitalist-friendly argument for you to chew on. There is a population of red people and blue people. Historically speaking, red people tend to be very good basket weavers, and the basket weaving community is dominated by red people. Perhaps if you put some blue people in positions of leadership... Even without respect to merit, you might find more blue people interested in basket weaving who learn to become great basket weavers. That would be nice. I don't know what effect that would have in a real world context, but let's just move on to the next point. Reform the institution. The FSF needs to correct its myopic view of the ecosystem, reach out to emerging leaders throughout the FOSS world, and ask them to take charge of the FSF's mission. It's these leaders who hold the reins of the free software movement today, not the FSF. If the FSF still wants to be involved in the movement, they need to recognise and empower the leaders who are pushing the cause forward. Nowadays, most people don't really care what the FSF has to say. Maybe we'll like, you know, listen a little bit, but they're not the guiding post. They're not at the front of culture pushing FOSS forward. There are some incredible people out there who have nothing to do with the FSF that people take a lot more seriously. Reform the message. People depend on the FSF to establish a strong background in free software philosophy and practices within the community, and the FSF is not providing this. Well, they are providing it, it's just not provided in an accessible and level tone. And the relationship between the free software and open source needs to be 
reformed so that the FSF and the OSI stand together as pillars at the foundations of our ecosystem. The OSI being the open source initiative, the organization behind open source and i can understand why a lot of people probably don't want to hear that they want everything to be free software and see open source as this distraction as this thing that pulls you away from free software as it stands we are so far away from primarily free software with copyleft that just doing what we're doing clearly isn't working and I've said it plenty of times before, I'm more practical in this regard where I'd prefer things to be at least open source rather than being proprietary. And it seems like the OSI is doing a much better job at achieving that goal. Now, the fourth point. Decouple the FSF from the GNU project. FSF and GNU have worked hand in hand over decades to build the movement from scratch but their privileged relationship has become obsolete. The GNU project represents a minute fraction of the free software ecosystem today, and it's necessary for the Free Software Foundation to stand independently of any particular project and focus on the health of the ecosystem as a whole. He's not saying the FSF or GNU should be shut down. They just shouldn't be intrinsically linked together. When you talk about the FSF, you are talking about GNU. When you talk about GNU, you are talking about the FSF. They should stand alone as separate organizations that may help each other out from time to time, but they shouldn't be the same organization. And there are great independent organizations in this space, like the EFF, like the FSFE, that all do incredible work. And finally, point five, develop new copyleft licenses. The GPL family of licenses has served us well, but we need to do better. The best copyleft license a day is the MPL, whose terse form and accessible language outperforms the GPL in many respects. If you don't know, the MPL is the Mozilla public license, and this is a far far more approachable license. There are some people that will argue it is not as powerful as the GPL, it is not as, you know, doesn't cover as many cases, and that seems to be valid, but it is much more readable and much more understandable for someone who actually wants to go and use it. And this is where the FSF can actually, you know, fill in a gap. However, it does not provide a comprehensive answer to the needs of copyleft, and new licenses are required to fill other niches in the market. The FSF should write these licenses. Furthermore, the FSF should present the community with a free software perspective on licenses as a resource that project leaders can depend on to understand the importance of their licensing choice such that they understand the appeal of copyleft licenses without being pushed away from permissive approaches. What they should do is make a very simple graphic, like a poster, whatever you want to call it, that clearly explains how these licenses work, what copyleft is, what the benefits are, without a hundred thousand words of essay to go and read to understand it. But where do you stand on the matter? I disagree mostly with this first point. I do agree the leadership needs to be reformed, not for the same reasoning, but I can understand all of these four other points as well, and I do have many agreements with them. I don't think the FSF needs to go away. I don't think anyone's in that position. But I do think there is some room for it to be brought into a more, let's say, I guess, modern approach. Maybe that's not the correct term. But not just this extreme wing that nobody really takes seriously. Bring it closer to where people can actually see what they're saying and find some reason to agree with them. But maybe you disagree, and you like the fact the FSF is here being the most extreme interpretation of free software. I would like to know why. If you want to let me know your thoughts, comment section down below. If you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, Deli, Barra Pay, link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and RMS Foot Gunk.